Hi, this is Francis from A Plus Tutoring. So I'm going to show you how to do the chapter 5.2 number 27 in Stewart Calculus 2 textbook. Okay, so in question 27, it said that it proved that this integral is equal to b squared minus a squared over 2. So obviously, in this chapter, we are not going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. We're going to use which one? This equation right here area equals to this part, right? So I, I have to use the limit definition again here using the right end point. All right, so let me write down what is delta x. Delta x for this is going to be b minus a over n. All right, then my function is basically x, right? And what is my ci? Ci is basically a plus i times delta x. And delta x is basically b minus a over n. So my ci is going to be a plus i times b minus a over n. And this is my ci. So I have to replace this into my function f of x. Now my function, again, I have to always, let me erase this part. So my function has to be always limit and approaching to infinity summation i equals to 1 until n of the function ci times delta x. So if I replace everything here, I'll get to limit of n approaching to infinity summation i equals to 1 until n. The function is x. So replacing this by x, I will have a plus i times b minus a over n. All this times delta x, which is b minus a over n. Now again, the variable here is i, not n. So this is my variable. Okay, so I have i here and n is my constant number is a constant number that is approaching to infinity, okay? That will be a variable for the limit and not for the summation, all right? So I have to separate into two terms because I have this first term and second term. This will be multiplied by this delta x right here for each term. Let me rewrite this into another equation here. So limit of n approaching to infinity summation i equals to 1 until infinity. Well, I would say, I would say n. Then my function is a times b minus a over n. This is my first term. My second term, okay, my second term here is plus i times this times that. So this is basically square, right? So I can actually write this way, plus summation i equals to 1 until n. So you can separate the summation if you want, and unless you want to put a big bracket, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So I have i, and then b minus a squared over n squared. So I have the two terms here, right? This is for the whole limit, right? Some teacher will be picky on the brackets, but uh, so just be careful for that. So I have limit and approaching to infinity, the first term is all constant. If it's all constant, what is the equation for that? It's c times n. So this constant times n. So, okay, I have this whole thing times n, which cancel out with this n. a times b minus a over n times n, right? So this is my first term. And then my second term, I have an i here. I here, summation of I, this whole thing is constant, constant, n times summation of I, which is this equation, n times n plus 1 over 2, all right? So let me replace that, right? So plus n times n plus 1 over 2 times b minus a squared over n squared. So if you want to know how these formulas comes from, you should try to prove it, okay? This is left for you to do this as exercise, right? This is actually uh, not very hard to prove for this one. You have to really know what you are doing with the summation. But anyway, this is another topic. So now, 
let's multiply this and evaluate with limit. Maybe I should just go ahead and evaluate with limit. But before doing that, I have to simplify my n. There's no n here, right? And here, basically, is n squared the highest degree on top. At the bottom is also n squared. Now, this would be my coefficient, right? This n squared will cancel with this n squared here. So that this is my coefficient over my other coefficient here because it's the same degree, so I just take the coefficient. Now this doesn't even have n, so this will stay the same. So I have what? Without doing the, well, without doing the limit, we actually sort of did it because it's the same degree, so I'll just write down the coefficient, then the limit will be evaluated, okay? So the first part is a times b minus a, if you are not used to use this trick or this method, then you can actually multiply out everything, right? And then divide it by the highest degree of n. And then you see the left out of the limit will give you the exactly the same value for the coefficient of the highest degree of n. All right, so first term here plus second term, which is b minus a, all this square over two. Now I have to simplify this to make it look like the what the question is asking me. Okay, so let's let's do this. I'll take this into my second page. Let me recopy that though. A times b minus a. Right, let me make it nicer. B minus a plus b minus a the whole thing square over two. So what happened here, I'll actually have to expand this b, and I'll have to expand this here. So this is ab minus a square plus one half of b square. Now this is a binomial that is square. So you have a trinomial at the end. This is basically b minus a times b minus a. A lot of students is making this mistakes. It's not b square minus a square. Do not do that, right? You have to multiply each term to each term. You end up with three terms, okay? All right, so, so b minus a, so and minus a times b, then that will give you minus 2ab, minus 2ab over two, and then plus a square over two, okay? So this is my three terms right here. So I can simplify this further, ab minus a square plus b square over two minus ab plus a square over two. Oops. Not b, but two. All right, so simplifying ab minus ab and then minus a square plus a square over two, which is giving you well, minus a squared over two. So what I have here finally is going to be b squared over two minus a squared over two. And this is basically my answer, right? If you write, rewrite it like this, b squared minus a squared over two. And this is how I prove this equation, okay? So the integral of a to b x dx is equal to b squared minus a squared over two. Isn't this nice? Now you can actually practice this again on number 28. On number 28 of this textbook is actually proving another form, another integrals using the same technique. Okay, remember to memorize this four equation here and the limit definition is very important for your final exam or even for your tests. Okay. On your final exam, most probably you have get at least one question like this, okay, easily. It's very popular for the teacher to put it on the final exam. All right, for more information, please visit my website, goforaplus.com. See you next time.